You may have read or heard that Excelium has a multi-core feature that leverages multiple cores on a server to accelerate system Verilog designs. Additionally, you may have heard that multi-core solution is ideally suited for design for test simulations. This discussion will cover why we say Excelium multi-core is ideally suited for DFT simulations, what to expect for acceleration, and how to get started with Excelium multi-core. First, though, let's look at what Excelium multi-core needs from a system Verilog simulation in order to succeed. Excelium multi-core needs two things to succeed, high activity, and that activity is on system Verilog that can be accelerated. High activity is defined as having many simulation events to process in a single time slice. It means most, if not all of the design regions are active, changing, toggling, and requiring calculations to determine the next state. During simulation, that activity will be distributed over multiple cores of a server to accelerate the design. Now we need that activity to be on something that can be accelerated. In general, Excelium multi-core can accelerate the near synthesizable constructs of a design, and as such, it will focus and accelerate the chip rather than the test bench. So we need that high activity to be on the chip rather than the test bench. And of course, more is always better. Larger chips have a higher likelihood of having simultaneous events, more for us to paralyze, more acceleration to be had. We find that smaller IP blocks may just not have enough events, even if they're active, may not have enough events to warrant splitting this and using multiple cores. So why is DFT particularly good for Excelium multi-core? Primarily because they have highly active vectors that are focused on the design rather than the test pitch. Most DFT simulations are done at the gate level, which have long simulation times where going faster will be valuable. Additionally, because they're on gate level designs, they are inherently something that multi-core can accelerate. So most of the DUT will be accelerated. The DFT test benches are usually extremely light. They're very light. They apply the patterns, they check the results, maybe there's some initialization, but there's little else going on in the test bench. As such, any activity will be in the chip rather than the test bench. And that amount of activity is extremely high. By their very nature, the DFT patterns are intended to cause huge amounts of toggle and then observe those results. So by default, these designs have high event density. So we have high event, event density in the test bench on a gate level simulation that takes a long time. Perfect for Excelium multi-core. What kind of results can we expect with Excelium multi-core? I broke the results up into three different regions here. Early in the design cycle, you will do simulations with zero delay. You want to check your patterns out. These zero delay simulations are ideal for Excelium multi-core because when that active edge hits, most flops need to be recalculated. The combinational logic between them also needs to be recalculated. And so for serial ATPG, we can see five to 10x acceleration over a traditional Excelium single core, if you will, Excelium single core solution. Parallel ATPG, because it has a slightly higher test bench, they're skipping events that we would have accelerated in a serial ATPG run, sees about three to five X acceleration over Excelium single core. Later in the design cycle, when you have layouts uh, available and you want to annotate those, those results back into your simulation, we can accelerate those simulations as well too. Serial ATPG and parallel ATPG both can be accelerating, getting three to five X and two to three X type acceleration respectively. Now, the annotation of the delays causes the same events that were in zero delay to now be distributed slightly more, to slightly unique times. As such, we see a little bit lower acceleration. However, with these long SDF simulations, these savings, two to three X can still be days of simulation saved. So significant savings to be had um, with SDF annotated netlists. A third type of DFT simulation that teams will do are BIST simulations, both memory BIST and logic BIST. Now there we can see two to three X type acceleration, but it's highly dependent upon the strategy being implemented. For instance, a memory BIS strategy that tests one memory, moves on to the next memory, then moves on to a third memory, has a very distributed event thing. It does not have high activity. However, a strategy where you're testing multiple, not necessarily all, but multiple memories simultaneously will have a far higher activity, high, far higher activity, and we will accelerate that simulation significantly. I hope that's whetted your appetite for trying out Excelium multi-core. And I want to highlight that it is relatively easy to, to, to run Excelium multi-core. If you're already using Excelium multi-core, because this technology is married inside of Excelium itself, 
um, all you have to do is get full access to a set of cores. And this is significant. We do need full access to the cores so that way they can communicate between each of the cores efficiently and effectively. Use a release 2103 or later, use something recent if you will, and add two options to your command line, dash MCE to enable the technology and MCE PI to get a, a simple profiling of where the time went should we wanna do any performance tuning. If you're gonna use Tickle to force and deposit any signals, you'll need to specify those up front via an Excelium access file. We will otherwise optimize those signals out, so you'll want to tell us to keep those signals. If a signal is being forced inside the test bench, we'll automatically keep those and make those forcible, so that way that force takes place. And that's it, run and accelerate. If you're using a third-party simulator, the Cadence field team can help you convert your simulation, uh, convert the options, if you will, over to Excelium. Once you get the design compiling and simulating, we recommend that you um, switch over to Excelium, add those two options, run faster, and bring up your design that way. A tip for you, if you're doing Tetramax or test bench, Tetramax or Tessent test benches, um, you should also add two options, enable block release and enable size resize opt. There are constructs inside those test benches that Excelium Multicore doesn't compile, or doesn't accelerate, and it leaves for Excelium single core. As a result, that's not done very efficiently. This will just make it run more efficiently. I went through a lot very fast. Um, we have a far more in-depth conversation, about a 35-minute conversation on Excelium Multicore available on Cadence Online support. Uh, you would search for Cadence Tech Talk and search for uh, Multicore for DFT, and you'll find a 35-minute conversation that covers uh, all, everything that we touched on here, as well as uh, a case study and where a customer saw ex uh, significant acceleration and how they went about doing that as well. Uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it, and uh, hope Excelling Multicore can start accelerating your DFT simulation soon. Thank you.